Hey, what's up, y'all? My name's Justin, and today I have a video for you about five tips on how you can start your own chamber ensemble or band today. So the first tip is gonna be that you're gonna wanna be able to start out on your own. And now you're probably wondering, well, I searched a video on how to make a band or a chamber ensemble. Well, why would I wanna start on my own? Why is that important? Well, let's put it to you this way. Let's say, let's say I'm not in a band and I wanted to go out and just find people to play with. Band members aren't just gonna fall on my lap I'm wasting my time sitting and waiting for people to, uh, you know, look desirable for me to go and say, hey, do you want to start a group together? You know, all of my groups that I've been a part of that were successful, I started doing my own thing. Like, I have a story. So, uh, when I was in college, I joined a group called Citizen Shade, but I didn't just join them. I tried to create a group on my own. Um, it was kind of like a mock piano guys thing. I was recording my own music. And my buddy, uh, David, he actually said, well, hey, like, I like what you're doing. Like, maybe we can get together and start writing some music. And just like, so I think we did a cool cover of Maroon 5 Maps. Hey, neighbor. Yeah, I think we did a really cool cover of Maroon 5 Maps and some stuff by Adele. And then turns out he was friends with a guy named Will. And he was actually, uh, you know, starting up a group with him called Citizen Shade. You can look up on Spotify right now. They're a very successful group. There's one called If You Want that has over a million streams, but it's just crazy to think I would have never been in that group if I just sat in my room all day. You know, trying to claw my way up and do it on my own is what uh, showed David that I'm serious, which he went and told Will about, you know, a musician who's serious, which he then contacted me. And so that this is probably the biggest tip. And the way you go about doing it on your own is you need to be able to command the skills on your instrument. I mean, you need to be able to play to a certain level. So if you're just starting out on your instrument, I would recommend not joining a group unless, um, okay, I take that back, unless you are a student and you're looking to join a student group, especially if you're in classical music, like an orchestra, a youth orchestra. Look on my video for the uh, reasons why you need an instructor, because you'll find that an instructor can actually get you plugged into playing opportunities if you are new to your instrument. This is not necessarily if you're new to your instrument. Um, you need to be able to command skills on your instrument and obviously the better you are, the more you can attract the right kind of musicians, which is really important. Okay, number two. So you've gone out and you've found some musicians that are willing to work with you and the right kind of musicians because you didn't just sit on your butt all day. Now it's time to start getting into some of the more business side of things. And you're probably gonna think, well, yeah, I just start practicing, but if you're already well on your way as a musician, you already know to practice. So the next tip I'm gonna give is to start your branding. Why is branding important? Well, as a group, you want people to come and see you. So you need to start thinking of yourself as more of a business than anything else, really, because your brand is what conveys your message to people. Like, uh, people have questions like, why should I listen to this band? Um, what do they have to offer that other bands don't offer? Um, why should I buy their merchandise? Why should I go to their shows? Um, for the more classical side of things, people are gonna ask, why should I go through the hassle of supporting these guys? So your brand is going to allow people to become part of uh, your tribe, right? So people who are similar in thinking to you, who share the same interests as you, who just align themselves with you, you want to attract the right kind of people who are not only just going to support you, but who are going to represent your brand and share your music and your content and just be all about you. The branding is the hook that you throw into the water for people. Your music is the bait, if that makes sense. Your branding needs to be what you want people to see. It needs to be the best part of you. And it needs to be the part of you that you think is special and is worthy of attention. And it needs to be done in the right way. And there's other resources that you can get for branding. And I might even do a video myself, but look into branding. It's probably the first thing I would look at as a group before the practice, to be honest with you. Tip number three, you need to build a practice schedule. It can't just be whenever you feel like it. And to be honest with you, ideally, you need two practice sessions a week for at least half an hour to an hour. And it needs to be at a central location where you can all meet and you're not, you're not learning things at this rehearsal. You're bringing what you've already practiced 
and you're putting it together and you're making use of your time and being effective just like you should when you're practicing alone. And it frustrates the crud out of me when people don't practice and they come to practice thinking that, oh, this is their time to learn their part. And I'm sitting here ready to go because, you know, I'm respecting everyone's time by practicing because I'm respecting everyone's time by going home and working on the content. But when you come as a musician and you're not able to command the music, you're not able to uh, play something proficiently because you just didn't work on it enough. I mean, you're, you're hurting everyone. You're wasting time. And again, time is the most precious commodity we possibly have. Rant over. <laughs> so please don't be that person that doesn't practice. Your practice session should be putting the parts together and making it musical, not learning what you should have already learned. But the way that you know what to practice at home is you do a group me. But there's other resources out there that you can actually just, just get a group chat going um, to be able to communicate. So you'll be able to say, hey, we're working on this on this day at this time if you don't have a set time, um, which you probably should aim for. But it's, it's just really important to know what you're doing before you get there. Number four, you need to be able to produce content. You need to be able to uh, do recordings, do YouTube videos, uh, maybe even a podcast have someone who's going to be able to create art for you or a good photographer within your group who can take photos. You need to be thinking about the media that you're putting out, but recordings are what I'm gonna focus on primarily for this tip. So does any one of you have a recording studio? You know, the chances are pretty high, especially in the higher caliber musicians because recording studio equipment has gotten cheaper over the years. It's becoming a hobby for a lot of people. So there's a lot of junk out there in the airways. But if you are able to uh, get in contact with someone who has a studio and they're willing to be in your group, you know, that makes them more desirable. So consider someone that has a studio um, and is, you know, a decent musician um, you know, having a studio could be huge for you because you'll be able to produce that content. Um, because if you just recorded music and you put it out maybe like once a month without any kind of social media, without any kind of um, like regularly updated content, it's going to be harder for people to actually find you because while there's people out there looking for new music, they're not going to uh, go gun ho over you if they've never heard of you before and you have no followers, you have no subscribers, you, you don't really have anything to offer, it just makes you look less desirable. And again, it's because the airways are so full of everything that's out there right now. So you need to be able to produce content that people can get interested in and that's continuous, maybe like once a week you, you can post something. Um, like for instance, on Instagram, you could just post a nice picture of you in the group and you know talk about something cool, start a discussion. Um, if you had thump, 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 thump. You know, it's gonna be really slow at first. Whatever you post, whether it's YouTube videos or Instagram content, like with this channel, you know, I'm doing this not only to fulfill one of my needs as a musician, you know, I, I, I desperately want to share the things I've learned and create a community because there's so many YouTubers out there that have blessed me and if I can do that for other people, that's amazing. Um, but I'm also doing it because I hope to be able to plug the content in my other groups because I'm giving you a reason to trust me and to be interested in what I'm doing. So we'll see how that turns out. I'll more than likely do a video in the future about how to start um, a pretty easy to set up and cheap recording studio that can yield pretty good results. So be on the lookout for that one. Okay, number five, this one's huge. You need to be really picky on who you let in your group. And this one stings a little bit because the group that I've created um, with the help of some friends uh, just recently uh, vantage band you know we've seen some faces come and go but the choices of who joined the group weren't up to me it was more of a you know we're starting this thing from scratch and so you know I want to be supportive but I kind of saw where it was going <laughs> 
So I pretty much predicted these people would eventually leave. But we really weren't doing that much in the beginning other than kind of figuring things out because I mean, I'm super new to all of this, except for the Citizen Shade group. But for Citizen Shade, I wasn't in charge of so much um, creativity. I was more of a session musician and you know, I played for shows. You know, the other guys took care of most of the social media content and the branding and all that stuff. This is something I've had to learn very recently. And so it's very fresh for me to share with you. But I've seen the results of what happened, so. But you wanna be picky with who you let in your group. Um, for instance, uh, you know, again, with my group that I'm currently in, uh, we had one person who really liked a particular genre of music, but we started going away from that genre. And I, over the weeks and the months, I could kind of see it start, you know, boiling inside of him, you know, he really wasn't liking the direction of things. And he really just needed to kind of do his own thing, but I could see him getting aggravated and it was, he's a genuinely like nice and awesome person, but I could see this turning him into someone that, you know, he wasn't as pleasant to be around. And so, you know, he needed to get out and do his own thing, which he eventually did. If we had already known for sure what our branding is going to be, and we had more methodically planned out the way we're going to build our business, our band, our group, we could have avoided the hurt feelings because he wouldn't have wanted to participate in the first place. But I mean, sometimes that's just how it goes. So these are like the ideal ways to start a group, but starting a group can be pretty messy and you should be ready to, you know, see people come and go, especially as you find where you're supposed to go and ultimately you want good people who are going to be able to split up the work. You're going to want to be able to say, hey, um, so-and-so is gonna be in charge of content uh, for YouTube and Instagram, and usually that's gonna be your recording guy because he's got all the equipment. That's kind of what I do. Um, so-and-so is going to, because they're really good at the business side of things, they're going to start finding venues for us to play at and creating rapport um, and you know, being our ambassador, our representative of sorts. You'll want to find someone who's really good at being creative with videos and lyrics and just everything in between. It's however you want to split up the work, but you don't want everything falling on one guy. You're a lopsided group and you have most of the power going to two people who are going to be in charge of your decisions. And sometimes that's okay. Like you have a different format of a band where it's a singer songwriter with musicians who just want to come along for the gigs, but they're in charge of all the work, but everyone's cool with it. Like that's great. But if you start a band and you're all close friends and you um, thump, 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 there we go. But if you're a band and you know you're, you have close friends who you know want their hands to get dirty, but they just don't know what to do because so and so is already doing all the work. I mean, to be honest, you can go about that in different ways. You can try to give the work to other people, although I think that that doesn't work out as great. The best way for things to work out is for each member to um, decide that they're go-getters and that they want to go and do the content on their own and they assume the role by wanting it. See, that's the thing. If all of your members want it, then you really have something powerful. But if you have one group member kind of leading the charge and then everyone's kind of following, I mean, the more successful you get, the more heartache you're going to set up down the road because... I mean, those people are expendable at that point. If this video was helpful, go ahead and subscribe and like the content. Go ahead and leave me a comment. And if you have any questions about this, I would love to answer it. So go ahead and stay tuned for the next video and I hope you have a great one.